seven. Beard outside, the switch. Donchich goes, oh, what a great step! What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are doing well and I'm actually bringing you guys a New York Knicks update and it's on our second round draft pick from 2021. We selected him with the 34th overall pick and his name is Rokas Jakobaitis. He was actually from overseas. As you guys know, he did not go on to play with us when it came to the 2021-22 to campaign because the New York Knicks and Rokas actually had an agreement for him to stay overseas or let him go sign his contract with Barcelona which he did, and he actually went on to impress as he ended up winning the Rising Star Trophy. He's been very clutch down the stretch of games, specifically in the tournament. He has shot the three ball very well. He's actually in the Final Four, and we're sending out scouts of the New York Knicks to go watch him play and see his improvement if his physicality wise getting stronger really developing that right hand even more and we've actually talked to him or the rumor or the news is that Rokos Djokovic is going to be staying another year I don't know if he's going to be here after this upcoming season like not this season coming up but the season after I don't know if he's going to be a New York Knick but I really got to give credit to him. He has been clutch. He plays with a good pace. He does a really good job utilizing screens. He thrives in the pick and roll. He's a nice step back, solid hesitation moves. He's not some crazy athlete, and he's still going to have to develop that right hand, in my opinion. He's a lefty. I think it's too far that people are comparing him to a Goran Trogic, but even if he does come over to the New York Knicks, I do not think it would be the best of fit. Like, I'm rooting for him no matter what. If he stays overseas or he's a New York Knick, I wish him the best of luck in his career, but we have Derrick Rose, we have Miles McBride, we have Emmanuel Quick. We have Alec Burks, we play at the point guard position, so there will definitely be a log jam, but he played with a lot of talented players. When you think about it, Nicholas Kalathis, he's been overseas for a very long time. Baji, who's an upcoming NBA player, he played with Dante Exum, he played with Nikola Meritic this past season. But yes, the New York Knicks and him have agreed for him to stay another year overseas, but there would be a complete log jam. I don't see the fit, but he's a high IQ basketball player with solid fundamentals. Let me know down below your thoughts. Would you like to bring him over or do you think he's going to come over? Who knows what's going to go on to happen, but we selected him with the 34th pick. I wish him the best of luck no matter what, but the point guard position and him doesn't really make much sense. And he actually played with us a little bit in the summer league. Not a huge sample size, so we don't really know what he truly is. And he also played in like the second hardest league in the world, the Euro League. Like the NBA's number one third is the Turkish League. The rules are a lot different. You can't just look at the stats when it's when it shows like his value to the team because it's very stacked for an overseas team with the older players, the veterans they have, just how disciplined they are out there on the court. It's a more team brand of basketball. The rules are different. The game's played a lot different. There's not many players that just go out there when it comes to the Euro League putting up huge big time numbers. Even though Luca was known as this generational player coming out of overseas, the game's played a lot different when it comes to staying in the paint longer, the way you play defense, the way the fouls are called. It's a different kind of physical game. Like I'm not saying it's more physical than the than the NBA, but it's called differently. Luca wasn't just averaging thirty points per game. He was still dominating, but he wasn't putting up some eye-popping numbers because the game is played differently. Poor Zingas, he wasn't averaging like 20, so you can't really look at that. You have to really look at what can translate over to the NBA. So he wasn't on some high volume. He was averaging 17 minutes per game, but if you look at his per 36, he was pretty damn good. I wish him the best of luck. Let me know down below your thoughts. Peace out, y'all.